Professor Rao, absolute pleasure to speak with you and welcome to India. Thank you. I mean, you know, you've written about the curse of cash and perhaps as the best case example, the Indian government took your writings rather seriously, it seems, and they've, they went in and announced demonetization. I remember reading one of your pieces soon after demonetization took place and you said, you know, it's different from what you have sort of argued for in your book because your argument was basically based on the developed countries where a uh, maximum number of people have banking facilities. You've also argued that high value notes should be done away with completely. So in that case, I mean, India brought in the 2,000 rupee note, which is much higher than what they had phased out. Net net, at least seven, eight months down the line, how do you, how do you read it? Because you've added a new chapter in your book now on India. I have. I've added a new chapter to think about India, though it's still evolving. Um, I mean, the first thing to say is my book is about advanced countries. It has quite, quite a bit, some on India, things India's done. But I state, if you're a developing country, don't try this at home, wait, mm -hmm. because of the financial inclusiveness is issue especially, and the fact cash is so broadly used. The, the single biggest thing that India did that was different than my view of how it should be done was to do it overnight. I said, do it over five to seven years because you want to avoid collateral damage. And you've given the example of Germany. Uh, oh, there are many, the, the uh, way countries. the Europeans worked and the, in the, uh, when they changed from the national currencies to the euro. But a, a thing which isn't obvious unless you study it is it actually takes a long time to print currency. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone in India knows this now. It's not something you just can do in a week. So. They didn't just remove the large denomination notes or exchange notes. They didn't have the new notes ready. Mm -hmm. So you really went through this traumatic period where the economy was demonetized. A lot of that has come back. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, other issues uh, about you know the speed at which it was done. Uh, my, there weren't really any super large denomination notes in India. The largest one was worth maybe $15. Mm -hmm. My book says, you know, $50 and above were the equivalent. Maybe in 10 or 20 or 30 years going to lower denomination mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. But that said, uh, I mean, in the Indian context, uh, there are many other things going on. For example, the uh, biometric identification mm -hmm. that provides financial inclusion that's way ahead of the world and mm -hmm. where I think the world has a lot to learn. So, you, so you're saying that demonetization should not be seen in isolation. It needs to be seen in the context of what else the government no, is doing. No, absolutely. You mm -hmm. have to look at the whole picture of everything the government's doing to discourage the use of cash, to bring more of the informal economy into the formal economy. The GST, the gross sales tax, is obviously a huge thing mm -hmm. uh, that will help help do that, and I think ultimately provide better jobs and make the economy more efficient. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you look in isolation at the demonetization, I don't think there's any question mm -hmm. that it hit the informal sector very hard. There was knock-on effects to the formal sector, and if you did it more slowly, those would have been less. I was speaking with uh, Professor Jeffrey Sachs recently, and he said that the demonetization will become like a case study for economists for years and years to come. Uh, I, I thoroughly agree with that. Uh, yeah. So then, you know, when you when you study what what. much collateral damage you'll quickly pull back and find yourself just exchanging money as quickly as you can and I think that we did see that lesson from India it's remarkable that the effect on the formal economy was not greater I mean the numbers are hard to know till mm -hmm. they settle down mm -hmm. but it was less than people expect we'll never know the effect on the informal economy mm -hmm. but I think the general theme is that you're not really going to be super successful at grabbing the black money. What you want to do in going to what I call a cash light or less cash society 
is make it harder to do big transactions in cash. I do not favor going cashless. Mm -hmm. I think that's a bad idea. We need it for privacy. Uh, it's still convenient for small transactions. Mm -hmm. But for goodness sake, if you're buying a $40 million apartment in Trump Tower mm -hmm. and you're paying cash, mm -hmm. that's not because you just like using cash instead of an electronic transfer. Uh, obviously, it's used in a lot of illegal activity mm -hmm. in India and political corruption, indeed, in many places in the world. Mm -hmm. So you're, I think what you want to try to do is regulate the use of currency a little better. Mm -hmm. I think a simple way to do it is get rid of large denomination notes. You know, because, because the government did it, you know, uh, it was done swiftly, and you've said no country in peacetime has attempted what India has done with demonetization. Yes. You've seen that in the context of post-Second World War, but there was a national emergency in this we case. Did it there in was no, the Americans did it in the Vietnam. The Americans did it as well, exactly, in, in Vietnam. And, but in India, there was no, there was no uh, you know, emergency or the immediate uh, need for it, one would say. So somewhere do you, you know, does it concern you that perhaps the merits of demonetization, which would have been doing it, uh, you know, slowly, gradually over a certain period of time, like, like what we've seen countries in EU doing, doing away completely with the high-value note, which the government has hasn't. In fact, they've brought in a new note altogether, which has doubled the amount, uh, you know, the you know the demonetized mm -hmm. note that they had done away with. Uh, somewhere, the merits have now become sort of overshadowed, and because it was not executed perhaps properly, that uh, you know that that it's perhaps marred and sullied the entire experiment? Well, I think we'll need years to say, but you have to look at the larger picture of what the government's done. And certainly politically, it was much more successful than it was perhaps economically. And maybe we'll energize other reforms, show that the government's very committed. I, I, again, I wasn't consulted. Mm -hmm. This wouldn't been what I would have designed. But I think, I think it'll take a long time. You can point at narrow ways in which it's been unsuccessful. But in you know, a broader long term, it may prove to help uh, move the economy towards more digital You're transactions. You're still keeping an open business. mind, because a lot but of I people have already given their views, saying that it has not worked. But you're saying we need to still hold no, our horses and of, of give course. it time. No, of course. I mean, the, the problem of tax evasion, corruption in India are gigantic. And how to think about how this will you know, have a long-run effect is hard to know. How will it affect the government's other uh, efforts? How will it affect political support for other efforts that the government uh, undertakes? If this was popular, even if economists who study it largely mm -hmm. don't agree, maybe it'll help lead to other things. I'm trying to take an eclectic view. Right. Again, um, this isn't how I would have said to mm -hmm. do it, but I think it will take time to sort out all the effects. One of the arguments the government in India gave for not giving time, which you said the reason why they didn't do a gradual way, but they went full throttle, more like a surgical strike on, uh, you know, on high value notes, was they didn't want to give those people holding cash time and give them time to slowly convert their uh, sort of black money into uh, so, so, here, here, so do you I mean does that argument hold I mean that's I mean so there was just actually to the respond Jam to Jam James Henry's original idea in the mid 70s was exactly that he said we'll just do it overnight some Sunday we will have tax auditors waiting we will have the Justice Department waiting but the thing is the scale of this is so yeah. big you'd need to train an army of mm -hmm. tax inspectors an army of justice investigators. How are you going to do that in mm -hmm. secret? You don't have the infrastructure to seize all the black money. So what happens is you get chaos, a lot of collateral damage, and I think what India quickly did and what the U.S. would have done had it adopted James Henry's policy was try to mitigate the collateral damage, not you know, try to identify every person and everything, and, and I think that's inevitable. It's not realistic to think that you could do it overnight and grab the plan. So therefore, money. India should have adopted the more gradualist approach. Well, in your view, I, I again, I don't know what the total picture will be. I have not. India is, has a lot of things going on at the same time, so we have to look at the whole effects. But looking narrowly at this exercise and looking at the lessons for other countries, I think it's definitely something to be considered doing over a long period, like Australia's looking mm -hmm. to do it slowly. Doing it overnight, you'd have to justify it in some other way. 
uh, as I believe the Indian government uh, has, has said it can. What does it uh, say about you know, the, the political style, so to speak, of Prime Minister Modi? Because uh, you know, John Chambers was on CNBC, and he said that, you know, I mean, here's a man who's willing to uh, you know, take these bold decisions, look at what he's done with demonetization, look at what he's trying to do with digital, you know, digitizing uh, India. Therefore, countries around the world must draw lessons that here's somebody who is willing to bite the bullet. Uh, what does it say? What, according to you, uh, uh, what's the big takeaway f from this experiment about Modi's leadership style? Well, I think, you know, in general, when the world looks at India, it looks at a country that's always moving forward, but very slowly, and sometimes in periods not at all. And it's a little frustrating because India has so much potential, so much intellect, so much dynamism, and yet it hasn't, you know, over some periods performed like it might. So surely when I worked at the International Monetary Fund and my successors as chief economist mm -hmm. would come in and say, great job, but you could do more. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, giving a sense of energy, giving a sense that the government was really committed, giving that sense that the government's really willing to take political risks is probably a good thing. Uh, so I, I, I think that's sort of a lesson of it, of, you know, trying to do things boldly. On the other hand, uh, of course, the more you can have a commission study something, mm -hmm. prepare the groundwork, make sure you're doing it right, uh, the system that a technocrat like me mm -hmm. largely supports also has a lot to be said for it.